I'd say to the Bolton people, look, go through the correct methods because I'm chairman of the union, you know, so you can't do anything sneaky. So, fair enough. So about a week later, the manager called me in his office and said, look, Pat, there's been a bit. Uh, and I said, before you go any further, I'm not interested. I'm happy here at Tranmere. I want to get us to the Premier League. And as I was walking out of the office, he said, do you want to know who it was? I went, oh, right, who was it? <laughs> Celtic. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> God. And as a Celtic supporter at the time, I was like... So, yes, I like what you've done to the place. <laughs> <laughs> Among the most famous ones, it's this one. You can tell these rugs aren't real. Why? What? It's too squared. If they were real, they would be soft away. Is there anything you don't know? No, I, I just... I, that's, that's, not, that's just rugs. <laughs> Thank you for welcoming us into your lovely home. <laughs> if only. Uh, football has clearly been very good to you. When, when were you happiest as a football player? My first season at Clyde when I was a kid, I was 17, I was still a student. So be, when you're a student, you, you have no fears, you no worries, you're just doing it for the pure joy. Um, so I was really happy then because football was just what I did for a laugh. We won the league and got promotion and I got Young Player of the Year in Scotland. And then I got out of Chelsea very quickly and I, we won promotion and I get player of the year and I thought, yeah, it's going to be easy this professional football <laughs> art. Young guys <laughs> have a whole career of just winning things. Was football particularly important to you pursuing as a career? Because I, I think when you, you left Clyde and went to Chelsea, you did or did originally because you were do, at university and, and weren't, didn't seem to be that fussed well, about no, Well, yeah, that, that's a, it's a real dichotomy in there, a difficult one to get across all the time. I loved playing football, and I don't know if there was anyone who loved it more than me. I absolutely adored it. And it was quite surprising, because once I got down there, I realised, I actually can still do it for fun. You know, you don't actually have to drop that and do it professionally. And the best people at any, job, any f sports look comfortable and calm and relaxed in it. Now you can be uptight and fighting and battling and be a very, very good person at what you do, but to to maximise your own ability, especially if you're a creative type, I think you have to have that comfort and relaxation and joy. How do you think you'd have coped today with the intense scrutiny, the, the sums of money involved and the you know, people just seem to take the game far too seriously well, and then you everything you do has been monitored and possibly criticized on, on Twitter or Facebook wherever you oh, I, I get that myself anyway doing this job I do I'm in the media quite a lot you know and you get the madness of Twitter which I don't care for other people seem to think you have to do that and they, you don't it's plenty of look have a look around football schools but, did but quite can... schools did quite well did they not never selling the personality just going and playing generally it can be done as a player, you were renowned for sort of twisting the blood of opposing defenders and, and leaving a trail of them in your wake. How much of that was down to the one-on-one -on -one sessions you did with, I believe, your dad yeah. as a kid? I owe everything to him. Everything I did in my football career was him. Every day after school, I'd come home and he'd be waiting. I would have to wait with my boots for him to come home from work to do dribbling in the cones. Hour after hour after hour. And do it with your bad feet, your good foot, do it with your eyes closed so that by the time I'm like nine, I never had to look at the ball. My look at the ball, you know what it is, I can feel it. So it was a real passion and love for the game developed through my dad. Um, and there's something, if he gives you that and then by the age of nine, eight or nine, you've got all that behind you and then you start playing for teams, you're usually going to be quite, yeah. quite good. <laughs> the best goal you ever scored was for Clyde. But the cameras weren't there to, to record it. <laughs> cameras were never there. <laughs> there were never any cameras at Clyde, and there was never cameras. Talk, talk us through it. I'd been with Clyde for about a year, and uh, there were all teams interested. But again, it was having no real effect on me. I wasn't bothered. Uh, but I knew Celtic had come to see me, and Billy McNeil was the manager. And I went for a mazy dribble from my own half, and just kept going until I beat everyone and stood in the ball in the line and just tapped it in. And as I ran back, I thought, right, well, at least that was show. And I looked up to where Billy McNeil was sitting. Was being the operative words. <laughs> he had gone. Oh, dear. <laughs> and he'd missed it. And I'd done it all for that moment. But there was a good thing that came out of that. Because my dad had said, you should do that every game. And we came to this agreement with my dad and I that every game in my career that he came to see, which was out of 800-ish games, 
he'd probably seen it, seen it about 760 or 750. Out of all those games, there was one moment that I would go on amazing for the pure joy of it. And it became the signature of me saying hello to him. I'd do this amazing, amazing, amazing travel. And he was go. <laughs> so we had kind of code, uh, which I kind of liked. Is it a source of concern for you when you watch football today that the home countries, and I'm including my own Ireland in this, don't seem to be producing those kinds of players anymore? It's hard. It's really hard to do it. Because how, how much of it, in your opinion, you can only guess, I suppose, is it down to application and how much is down to just natural talent? You, you might have the natural size for it. You might you know, have quite lithe limbs. You might have a... The vision isn't natural. That, is, is more natural. You either do or don't have that, I would reckon. The pure skill on the ball, that's something you absolutely just work for. That's the, that's the hours. 100% that that's the hours. And that's where Hazard, that's why I adore Hazard so much. He can do all that dribble stuff as well. But he also knows you're going to get thumped a lot. You're going to get crowded all the time. You better have some plan B's and plan C's up your sleeve. And he's got them. I could see the mistakes he was making. Obviously, I played in the same position. I knew the mistakes. Like one of these big mistakes was he'd get the ball, he'd dummy, beat the guy, and wait for the hit. You're thinking, what are you doing? Stop doing that. Don't get the ball and stop. Get the ball, then move, then go. And, and it's been brilliant to watch every single one of the little tweaks that had to be made. He's just making them, he's just ticking them off. I don't know who's telling them. He's probably just learning it. And back to that one, but see that running with the ball and never looking. Have a look at him. Yeah. He's not looking there. He doesn't need to look there. The amount of times people say, right, well, keep your eye on the ball. No. <laughs> you really ought not to keep your eye on the ball. You should be beyond it by the time you get into a professional stage. Uh, you want to know the time at heart because you're a good journalist, so you're going to ask that question, aren't you? Yeah. By well, I'm going to guess <laughs> that it was at Everton, was it? Just after Everton. Just at, yeah. When I leave Everton, I was playing at the peak of my career the best I'd played. I was absolutely the strongest I'd been. Everything was right. And not one top club would touch me. The year before, my name was bottom of the ballot paper for strike action as chairman of the PFA. And you think that's Could be the fact that I was just, I'd suddenly become rubbish. That could be the case, yes, you could be right. Or the game had changed and it become more power dominated, which maybe. You could be right. Um, but for, funnily enough, I got more caps when I left Everton and went to Tramia than the rest of my career combined. During your career, you had opportunities to go to PSG and Galatasaray, and you turned both down, which I found surprising because... Shocked me as well. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, you have this reputation as being the renaissance man of football, and surely, you know, uh, uh, some time in Paris would have appealed, or broadening e your e already wide horizons. Why, why didn't you this, go? This, this upsets me that you know me better than I thought you should. <laughs> yeah, that was why I was going to go to PSG. Um, they were interested. I was leaving Chelsea and you anyway. They, were, they changed their style. One of the coaches has said, classically, if you take more than two touches before you get it in the middle, we're going to sub you. <laughs> Bye, I'm off now. <laughs> this isn't the kind of tick attack of football of the future that I want to see. Anyway, um, so I, I was all set up. And then just at the last minute, um, Everton called. What do you think you bring to the party in your role as a pundit? And, and do you enjoy it? Loved in the punditry. Um, I have purely one thought in mind when I do punditry. I'm going to try and tell you something you may not know. That's it. Full stop, underline. Is it ever a struggle to come up with stuff? It's sometimes hard to see, I'll grant you that. It's sometimes hard to see. But in individual games, I've, I will never, ever have a... I can promise you I could watch an under-10s game and I'll give you something. As far as your, your DJing career has gone, and you've done career. it for years, <laughs> yeah, career. <laughs> um, where, where the best are we joke most, of the day. Where, where is in a, we most like to find you, like in a field in the middle of nowhere, no, in Essex, no, 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 a no, dingy no. indie club? Or dingy a, indie club for me. Dingy indie club, yeah. okay. By the way, in DJ career, can I really, you don't I, make any I, money out of this. This is for fun. Yeah, yeah. You, someone I, I was, you, it was said slightly yeah, tongue in good, cheek. Good. You go around and play your favourite music really loud. <laughs> it's not to like. Who would have thought it, hey? 
Not you, I bet. Not even me, to be fair. But France have two clubs in the quarterfinal of the Champions League this season.